Hi there, I'm Bavik. I'm a GPST1, and currently I'm on a paediatrics rotation, doing two months on neonates and then two months on general paediatrics. Yeah, so I mean, I haven't done a rotation in paediatrics prior to this, and that's why I chose this program specifically for the paediatrics rotation. Um, and I think it's a vital skill to becoming a GP. You need to be able to uh, examine and treat children and manage them appropriately. Uh, and, I, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's a very wholesome experience, actually. So at the moment, I'm on neonates. And in NICU, uh, that's the neonatal ICU. So um, just treating them from their premature days and, and managing them and managing the parents, managing the families, that's a very different experience. And it can be very rewarding, especially when you have good outcomes. Um, I think so. So I think that that's, you know, I'm, I'm seeing babies every day, all day. It's, it's quite, it's quite warming and, and uh, it does, it does make you smile. So I think that's probably a highlight at the moment. Mm. So obviously it's 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 very different to you. I've done a lot of adult medicine, um, and it's it's uh, very different to not be able to get a history. So for for that's a huge difference because obviously up to eighty to ninety percent of our diagnosis is, is based on the history. So you rely a bit more on your clinical examination, your clinical um, acumen, and then you would uh, also need to take a history from the parents uh, and find out exactly how the baby's hearing different or presenting differently, if they're feeding differently, if they're um, not as active, if they're not producing as much urine or stool. or It's, it's quite different. And the parents are very anxious. You can imagine why. You can understand why completely. If a baby's in the neonatal ICU, no one wants to see their baby in an incubator uh, and and not be able to sort of hold them, interact with them all day. So it's very stressful for the family. And you have to be very sensitive with the way you give information. And it's a lot of reassurance, a lot of safety netting as well. Um, sort of making sure that they're fully clued up about what's going on and what to expect. I think this the team on pediatrics. I've been quite lucky so far. My, my previous rotation psychiatry team was great as well. But this one, an exceptional team. Very there's a real um, team working spirit and an emphasis on protecting teaching time. So if even things that are overlooked completely in other specialities, where if I'm if I'm on call and holding the bleep. But if there's teaching going on, someone else will answer the bleep for me. And it's really refreshing. I, I don't think I've experienced this before. So the senior, the, all the senior doctors are excellent. The registrars, consultants, very supportive. You can ask them any questions, even if it's small. Um, and obviously, because I had minimal, I had no experience in pediatrics actually before this. So, so I would be asking them for advice a lot. Uh, and you never feel judged. You never feel like you're asking a silly question. They, they, they're very supportive. I think that other specialities, other teams could probably learn from this, this way of functioning. Very, um, it's more of a learning on the job as opposed to service provision. So you actually, your teaching is protected and there's teaching nearly every day, be that a peer review, um, a clinical teaching scenario or simulation scenario and it's 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 excellent and even something different there is a completely different policy here where if i'm on call or, or uh, say a long day that's eight in the morning to eight in the evening as opposed to me holding the bleep for 12 hours which is extremely exhausting someone else holds the bleep for me during the normal working hours up until 4 4 30 and then i take it over from 4.30 till 8 in the evening. So it's, it really eases that pressure. Um, 
I don't have that on nights, but it's a nice luxury to have in the daytime. And I think it's a really clever way to ease the stress, the fatigue and the pressure on the doctor who's on call during the day shift. I think one, there was one, I was very anxious about deliveries. So we have to be present at, at, at birth. Um, and it, it's scary because if if the baby is not crying as normal or is not, uh, they use the, the app GAR score, which is a scoring system to assess the baby's sort of, um, it's, it's a quick a quick scoring system to see how well the baby is um, and if they if they're scoring low or they're needing respiratory support you'd be the one to have to give that and overnight it's scary because you're you know the registrar has to cover all the wards and the ICU side so it they won't always be there so that that was very scary for me initially but once you've I did it with supervision initially during my day shifts. I actively asked, can I go with supervision? And now that I've built my confidence, once you do one or two and giving oxygen to babies and, and then uh, giving ventilatory support, then you, you feel a bit more confident. So it's definitely, that was probably one of the biggest stresses during uh, earlier on in the rotation. I thought that I'd, I, I knew that during night shifts, I may be alone. I may have to do this alone. So I, during day shifts, before my nights, I was lucky enough to not go straight on to nights. I, I asked registrars or I asked other colleagues who, who've been on the job for longer than me that, can I just come with you, please? Um, so that would, that would be a tip, actually, that, you know, use that opportunity when there's more staff around to learn because that's your chance to learn and then you feel a bit more confident when, if and when you have to do that by yourself.